Hi, Ishmael here, aka the Ish9, back again discussing some of your favorite audio and cellular technologies. Here we have an updated review of the Sennheiser BT400s. Uh, this is a new offering from Sennheiser, and so far they have been a pleasure to use. But like with all Bluetooth technologies, there's always some give and take. So previously, if you have not checked out my unboxing and initial impressions, feel free to do so before watching this video. I'm going to try to keep along the same lines as that, but also give some updated real world use impressions and how I see these headphones pretty much sustaining themselves long term. The first thing out of the box that I've experienced with these headphones is an extremely long update process. It took maybe about two hours. Um, you can listen to the headphones intermediately through that process, but hopefully future updates get faster and stability continues to maintain. Before that update, I experienced some driver flex and kind of some snap, crackle, and pop going on between trying to use the controls here on the headbuds or the earbuds. But moving forward from that, after the update, they smoothed out greatly. I have no connection issues even after leaving either my phone or device um, somewhere in the house and walking to another part of the home or walking to another room or going to get laundry, whatever it is I'm doing. I had no issues with connectivity, no issues with still controlling uh, my music or my content, whether I'm listening to podcasts or I'm on one of my music applications. So that's very good news. One thing I do notice is that the passive noise cancellation with these headphones, as good as they are, you know, unless you get that good seal, you may not experience the same audio quality that maybe some other people are getting. And that's the same with any pair of headphones. It doesn't matter how much they cost. You got to get a good seal. You got to get a good fit. And they have to be somewhat comfortable for you for sustaining long periods of time for use. These are a little clunky here. As you can see here, this is a, a little bit rounded off, squared off, I should say, as it fits into the ear canal. So you're very much so reliant on that tip to hold and seal in your ear canal. These pins here are um, one for charging and two for recognizing um, the ear connection because it does have the pause feature um, when it does come out of the ear, the ear canal. So you kind of have to be able to fit and insert this into the ear canal and uh, maintain an ear presence here. So that way it um, recognizes that it's in your ear. So one thing that I had to do is I had to change my tips and I changed my tips on all my headphones. So that's not really a big deal to me. So I went with the, the memory foam tips I'm going to leave a uh, link in the description. Whenever I get these are like sticky tack tips, they go bad very quickly. Um, it depends on how well you clean your ears every day, but these things can go bad very quickly. Nine times out of 10 people are replacing these after about a month. They're kind of pricey, but I do find that um, regardless of the shape of your ear canal, whether you have small ears or you have slightly bigger ears, these tips help maintain that seal. And that tackiness helps maintain a non-slip uh, functionality. So when you're running or whatever it is you got going on, or you're just head banging out to your favorite tunes, they make sure that whatever headphones they're connected to stay into your ear, regardless of the shape of the bud. So that's something that these tips are very good for doing. And that's the reason why I chose to use these tips. I'll try to leave a, a link in the description for anybody who's interested. So these tips here are what I'm using in order to maintain my seal and get a good sound presence. Now, they do have an extremely good connection and fidelity, regardless of if you're using an Android device with APTX or you're using your Apple device. I also tried it out with my current daily driver, my Huawei Mate 40 Pro. And this is the phone that I was connected to all yesterday after I reset it up. Oh, slipping off there. And 
That's the phone that I've stayed connected to all yesterday. Now this phone uses high sign technology, but the thing is with high sign is for whatever reason, whenever I'm using headphones that have aptX or aptX HD support, if the buds do not allow me to up the volume on the buds, then I have a problem. I have a problem if I can't up those up those uh, those decibels because it seems it seems to come in very low just from utilizing the volume up and down button on the phone. So that's a big plus with these buds because they do allow you to customize and set those buds up to be able to be used in such a manner. So if I go into the smart controls application. This is the smart controls application and we'll also discuss that equalizer because I think it is very, very important. Like I said, there's some give and take. If you just touch there on the headphones, it gives you a list of everything that you can do with these buds. You can swap those out at any point in time, whenever you want, but the functionality is there and it's very intuitive, just as intuitive as any high end buds that you can think of. So the voice assistant, the play pause, you can swap those around as you see fit, depending on your preference and just which hand is dominant and which hand you like to control things with. This is how you answer your phone calls. Phone call quality seems to be very good. No one has complained about me utilizing these buds. I haven't even mentioned it to anybody, whether I'm walking around outside, I'm driving in my car or I'm just in my home. No one has yet to complain about that, about these, um, uh, the, the call quality with these buds. So they seem to be very, very stable and very good in terms of connection. So those are the, the basics of the controls with the application. So I'd like to go over the EQ settings here and just kind of show um, my experience here with the equalizer and what I've come up with. So this is what I've come up with for my current sound preference. This is the best preference that I have found so far. That's uh, the most suited for not really messing up the mids and the trouble. And that is the give and the take. The give and the take is the fact that if you go up in bass, the mids and the treble will suffer a bit. And uh, that's the same with pretty much any EQ. Some headphones handle it better than others. Uh, Bluetooth, Bluetooth is Bluetooth. They're gonna behave and do what they do. But these, this is the best settings that I have to kind of up that bass a little bit so I can hear it better. You're not gonna get any sub bass with these headphones. So if you like sub bass, and you like the feel of the bass, then this isn't for you. But if you just wanna hear the bass, then these headphones do very well with at least allowing you to hear the bass without having the mids be too recessed. I'm not a fan of recessed mids. I'm very big on vocals. Like I said, I do like The Weeknd, uh, Bruno Mars, Anderson Pack. you know. So these kinds of artists have very good vocals and I'm trying to hear as best I can and pick pick up the uh, the tonalities that they're bringing to the versatility of their music. Um, however, I do want to hear my bass. I'm a big bass head. With these headphones, you're not going to very much so get that sub bass, that impact, but you can hear it and it is present as long as you're willing to kind of have some give and take there. You can go to an extreme and up that to the highest of heights, but that trouble is going to suffer. Those mids are going to suffer and it's going to sound very muddied to the majority of your library. But there is multiple presets, so you can add a preset. And if I say test, let's go test five. Here, so to say, OK, here's test five. I can up that to the highest of heights, but you see here through the spectral graph that they have here, how recessed those mids go. This is the midpoint here. See, it drops all the way down and 
then it's like low hanging fruit there with the trouble in the mids. So you're you're playing a, a dangerous game if you if you like to hear your mids and if you're switching around between different genres of music often. This here seems to be the sweet spot and I'm going to go ahead and show you here. These are my decibels. Um, I like to have the bass at about four or five decibels. The mids will recess. There's no helping that. If you up the bass, this is going to suffer a bit. This EQ is very basic, um, but it does. It is effective. It does work. So that's something that um, if you like to EQ, you can play around with that. If you do one bass, you can obtain it and still maintain a pretty good mid presence and some, some trouble. So here you'll see it's recessed by 2 dB. That's about my tolerance with recessing my mids, about 2 dB, 2 to 3 dB. I don't wanna recess that anymore. Um, the bass utilizing these headphones are not gonna be as important to me um, when it comes to maintaining good quality song. So I still wanna to listen to the song as best in the best of quality as I can. So this is about my tolerance. If anybody um, wants to give these a try, you have the CXs or you have the 400 BTs, go ahead and give my sound preferences a try. Um, you might find them very beneficial to you as well and well optimized for multiple sound preferences and multiple different styles of music as all of you well know my playlist. I did listen to some more bass heavy uh, music like I said before, oh, let me get that focus. Okay. As I, like I said before, I did listen to some more bass heavy music, uh, some Run the Jewels, um, just tracks that have more sub bass, a little bit more bass to see how these handle it. It's still tight, it's still sharp, not a lot of impact, not a lot of sub bass, but the bass is present. You still get your vocals, you still get your treble, and um, you still get to maintain. A quality experience with a lot of details in the treble region well as much as possible as you can abstract so those are my settings it's a pretty simple layout there I do like that layout and it does sound good on my Huawei Mate 40 Pro let's go ahead and, and get into um, some wrap up for how they fit in the ear canal and my final thoughts all right, so these are going to be my final thoughts with the Sennheisers. As you've seen, my settings, my presettings, that's pretty much how I like to have it. I just leave it there. I'm not bouncing around anymore or have to tweak anything after I set it. So this is how they're going to look in the ear, as you can see there. Like I said, they're squared off. They're kind of boxy. They're not well rounded off or fitting into the ear canal there but they fit in mines pretty well and the seal is good because of those sticky tacky um, tips that I have. So I have no issues with keeping those in and maintaining my seal. I'm even getting some reverb as I'm talking to you with these in my ear. So they fit and they sound very, very good. Um, because of the shape of them, they can get a bit uncomfortable when say I'm laying on my side or I'm laying on my ear that's something that maybe you probably want to avoid don't lay on your ear because it's gonna it's gonna irritate it and you're gonna get some soreness um, laying down also when I'm laying down obviously everything redistributes um, my equilibrium so the headphones seem to push out a little bit so I, that's the reason why I use these sticky tacky tips because they push out a little bit when I redistribute myself laying down. And especially if I'm shifting around a little bit, they seem to kind of push out. And so that can really mess with your seal. So that's something you want to be aware of when you're laying down. But all in all, at the price point, these are very, very good headphones. I stand by what I said before um, from my initial impressions. They're still very good for, for certain listeners if this is a style of uh, audio that you are looking forward to maintaining a neutral tonality or uh, maintaining a minimal bass presence while missing some sub bass and like i said there's some give and take there but 
it's not really too big of an issue depending on the kind of listener that you are. I have not experienced any latency with watching video or listening to podcasts or any other type of form of media aside from music. And that'll wrap up this video here for the Sennheiser CX400 BTs. Uh, they're very fun. Uh, I like taking them out, like taking them around. They're a good kick around pair of headphones where I don't necessarily have to worry about um, whether or not I damage them or anything like that because the case is well built. Everything's pretty much plastic and they're not super expensive. So I just concern myself with having fun. Um, let me know if you guys have these headphones and if there's any other questions that you might have about these headphones or anything else that you guys want me to take a listen to, uh, feel free to ask, um, get busy down in the comment section, like and subscribe to the content and we got a lot more coming for you. I'm getting better. I'm improving every day and, uh, we're going to continue to have fun. Thanks very much.